Okay, this video is going to be on project updates. Um, I made a list of all of the non-plastic model projects that I have going on. And part of the problem that I have is the prioritizing and scheduling work on them and actually doing it. <coughs> um, so to start with, I'm going to go through all of the items and speak briefly or just show you some items that I can actually show on screen. Okay, so I'm just going to this. <coughs> this is in no order. Um, a Bristol Beaufort 1 20th scale. To put that in perspective, wingspan would be about that. Okay, Bristol Beaufort 1 20th scale. Static, um, just because I like it. Bristol Beaufort 1 12th scale. I think it was 1 12th. I can't remember what I actually scaled the plans to. Um, so the 1 20th is sort of to get used to the thing. Uh, build and fit and uh, construction notes and so on. Then the bigger Beaufort is really intended just as a nice roof model. I don't intend to do that. I will build it as for RC but not fly at RC. And you can ask me why in separate videos. Okay, P51B Mustang. This one. Which is the one that I'm working on the wing for at the moment. Okay, very, very nice model, but not, by, by a long shot, not perfect. It's a nice entry-level warbird, but it's not a great, great model. Okay, that one is about one-seventh, if I remember correctly. Um, the wing is just standing over there. The, so I was doing a lot of uh, learning aspects on that one especially trying to do the wing really really top quality but one one thing I didn't do I, I chose not to do it that way is I didn't put retracts into that one so the next uh, warbird that I'll do will have retracts um, I don't think I don't think there was anything else I wanted to say about the Mustang the Gillows Mustang which I just forgot to fetch now that's that wingspan, fairly smallish one. The Gillows Mustang, which is fairly advanced, uh, needs fuselage covering. And it wouldn't take long if I actually just, you know, got down to doing it. The Wheelie Yellow Van, which is somewhat a shorter project. That's not a big deal at all. Um, and that one will be somewhat of a priority. That one will be starting imminently and it's not a, a constant or consistent one it's not one that demands um, a huge amount of uh, mental and uh, crafting effort the pillar which is that one and this so if you have watched a lot of my videos um, this is the one where I was looking through the kit to get an idea and realized that the thin versions, the, the original bulkheads provided, were really, really badly done. And I redid them in shape and in thickness of wood. So I have cut out and sanded mostly, I'd say 95% correctly without the... Uh, chamfer chamfering I think it's called uh, angling the bulkheads to run in line with the curvature of the boat so that's the point that that's at and that's not urgent because this one has to wait for the um, the marina to finish and the marina is this one So that's that hole that I'm busy with. So that's also very well advanced. But it does 
the 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 one difficult aspect it, it needs its in, in internals as well i need to do the rudder and throttle and engine and all of that but the one quite challenging aspect is turning that masts into tapered masts which is actually one hell of a job and it's i don't want to go through the method of doing it that way so i tried to invent a machine and i'm sort of at the point where i will be working on the masts so what this does is i bought these large rails very very strong and good rail which will then sit on the bench drill and the on the bench drill i put a sanding disc so that's going in that direction you mount you mount the you mount the mast into there and hold it with elastics or with tubes i will do more videos when you get to that and that runs against the um, the sanding wheel, and then you 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 simply sit there and do this, and gradually shift the shift the um, mast, the dowel, and this this entire contraption is almost in line with the disc, such that at the one end of the mast, it hardly takes off anything and at the other end it takes off the required amount but you only gradually so you sort of sit there and work the work the mast longwise rather than you know thinning it out and gradually moving up um, I'm not saying it's a hundred uh, I mean it's a better method I'm not saying it's a hundred percent and only once I've done them will I actually decide whether um, it was in fact worth it. But I sort of think it will be. So that essentially reduces the, uh, sorry, it changes the axis to which you are taking off wood. So that's the marina. Um, also, again, very well advanced. I don't want to rush it. I want to make a nice model out of it. Okay, um, one seventh Harvard. Now that is that. That's uh, that's a huge project. This one seventh Harvard because it's actually not just a build of a one seventh Harvard. It's an entire process that I'm going through. So, for instance, you know that is the section. Uh, which one is this? This is the section that goes roughly over there. No, you're not seeing that. Um, so that is roughly over there on the Harvard. So this was to trial quite a number of aspects. Um, many of which worked some of which didn't work so this was not even prototype this is mock-up stage mock-up and trialing processes this is the one of the center boards i've got about four center boards so this has got a huge amount of work looking at um, blueprints measurements and it's it's far less easy than you would imagine this is from air corps library looking at uh, a huge amount of reference there so i haven't done the fin there and the um this section is not done and i think the rest is okay so this is a accurate measure one seventh center board We have got a, a variety of these things on the go, uh, pieces, pieces of sections of the Harvard which are being built to blueprint. Now, working blueprints is a huge mission all on its own because you've got to find all the relevant blueprints. This is just one section and I've created, 
I've sort of updated and tweaked. So there's a version one, a version two, and so on. I'll just get to some of the actual. Okay, so, and then you are um, cropping and resizing and measuring. And printing it is a rather huge process so there's multiple of these documents this one was <coughs> the second version of the impenage document um, and obviously there's a fuselage document there's wings and so on and so on that is a very big project and one that I'm really, really keen on. Okay, next one. I won 12th Harvard. Now, that is meant to be comparison to the Gillows again, the Gillows Mustang, which is, I can't remember exactly, roughly around there. Um, so that would use this stuff, but in a more simplified format for 112th. Um, and be somewhat fast build. So I have not really got to any planning on the 112th, but it will be a very nice build when done. Okay, this Spitfire which I got, which I mentioned. So this is the Pika Spitfire, which I think is around 1.8th. It is not, not quite as big as the 1.7th. Let me just put that lid back on there. Um, now that Spitfire, I'm not really scheduling at this point. Not a bad model, but not a highly accurate model. Um, but an interesting one, an, an, an interesting one to build. Um, and I'm supposed to be getting a Harvard and a Corsair. I would probably like to start the Harvard first. Now, the difference between this Harvard and a Harvard kit similar to what I've showed you in the Spitfire is a massive difference in accuracy. So these kits which are produced for RC um, were produced by people that sort of roughly put together the shape of these things, working from whatever they had. But um, so the Harvard kit, which I'll get, won't remotely resemble the actual blueprinted Harvard. There, there probably won't be a single accurate measure anywhere on the thing. But still a nice model to build and hang up on the ceiling or fly, whatever. The Corsair will be a very, very good one, but I'm, I'll hold off on that. That'll probably be the best of the Warbirds. Okay, and then I've got the uh, a maths project that I'm working on, the Colatz Conjecture. Um, not remotely craft related, but quite an interesting thing as well and again not a huge one um, might take might take a couple of months or so but not continuous just do that a little bit at a time okay then we have the 3d printing of one seventh scale dummy Pratt & Whitney R1340s this is just a half engine just as the very first trial uh, which is not 1340 cylinders. It, I'm just showing you this as dem demonstrative. But I am designing Infusion 360 totally accurate, and when I say accurate, ac accurate up to the point of measuring off the actual engine with a tape measure. So it's not blueprinted, but it will be accurate to display in a 17th Harvard, and also I'll be doing one third scale. Um, Pratt & Whitney R1340s. My intention is to do about three, three full versions of the 17th and possibly three versions of the 13rd. What that requires is a lot of Fusion 360 work, which is not crafting work, which is why I end up sort of doing the Fusion 360 for a while and then moving back to the workbench and doing um, crafting work. The on the issue of um, 3D printing, I also have these pieces to make in um, on, on Fusion 360, redesign them. This is for the pillar, for that boat there. 
while this piece is okay, I just I just feel like redesigning and having them all done more accurately. Um, now, I could just measure them exactly as they were provided in the kit, but as we already know, that kit was disastrously inaccurate. So the likelihood that these items are accurate is not. However, finding any reference to that thing is just about <coughs> just about impossible. So I could just go ahead and do first versions measuring off here and live with that. So that that that's probably one of the next things that'll be happening is um, Fusion 360 drawings of these, which I quite like. I like learning in three, uh, Fusion 360. Um, with the I was just looking at the Mustang bits that I still need to fix so if you will remember from the Mustang videos from quite a number of months back I need to thin out because I forgot to taper thickness wise the ailerons and flaps on the Mustang so I, I covered them in uh, fiberglass but I forgot to taper which you will see on that one so those those lines there I was supposed to have this down to that thickness <clears throat> so that's a bit of an annoyance and because I was rushing now this one I'm busy sanding the fin uh, the rudder on the Mustang so I've got that pen line there for my center line but as I'm thinning it is sort of breaking out pieces because this is fairly soft block um, which is somewhat usual so what I'll be doing is using some hardwood a very thin piece of hardwood to give a little trailing edge cut on there um, but i won't put that on immediately because as you're sanding and uh, filing more it'll just rip this right out of there so this will mostly get sanded i'd say sort of 90 percent to what i want it and keep in mind this is not this is not remotely scaled this is, it just needs to look reasonable and then i'll put that in and it doesn't really need it on there and there it just needs it on the trailing edge piece so yeah there's lots and lots of little tasks but that covers the list of items that i wanted to speak about the next in the next video i think what i'd like to try and do is get a little bit of order on priority of these items because what's happening at the moment is um, I'm sort of haphazardly as time is available and as I decide to put energy into a particular thing I do a little bit on a project but it generally means no project is getting closer it's getting slightly closer to finished but I mean you know if I focused on one it would make huge headway on getting finished but, as we know, that isn't the way I work. I like to work on a whole lot of different things. So Wheelie Van, for instance, is definitely coming up very soon. These designs very soon. But once I've done these, I'm not carrying on working on the Pilar. The, the, the Marina remains the next thing. And on the Marina, I need to get that um, the weathering on the hull which I will be doubling with very soon. But it's all of these other big projects that I really need some sort of schedule and plan 